most of our firefighters work 24 hour shifts. So they work 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. They'll come in in the morning and get their uniform on and come down to the apparatus bay and they'll put their fire gear on the truck and they'll check their truck out to make sure it's ready to go for the day. It's got everything it needs. Everything functions as we expect. Wash the trucks, get everything ready to go. That's really their first priority. And then after that, their captain, we have a captain at each fire station, will run a briefing for the day and they'll talk about what they have going on that day. Um, and it's some general information updates that come out. You know, the chief sends out a department update weekly and whether there's new training that comes out. Myself and Chris, the captain that works on the opposite side of town of me, uh, he, uh, him and I set up a shift rotation. We have like a pre-can shift rotation and whatever's on the docket for that day, it's the same for each rotation and then we add in some training too. You know, if we're down here doing training like we usually do or uh, anything administrative duties during the first eight hours, phones drop from the ceiling so we know when and where to go and then we have computers in our trucks as well showing us when and where we need to go. And we slide down the pole and head over to the trucks and out we're out the door. And usually we got to make it during the daytime response we try to be out the door in a minute and then at night uh, a little bit longer just because we're coming out of sleep or whatever but we're out of the door well before a minute. Burnsville Engine 2 and Burnsville Medic 4, Delta Level 6 person. With all but two of our folks being paramedics, it's something that we can throw all hands on deck and provide the best level of care to, to the community. Uh, it's, it's unlike a lot of places in the state of Minnesota, and, and it's something that uh, I think the citizens of Burnsville are, are very fortunate to have. We have very highly trained, highly skilled folks that go out and, and provide such a great service to this community and um, are really proud of the work that they do. There's a big benefit to having both firefighters and paramedics, and it could be a simple response from just the ambulance with two paramedics going routine, so no lights or sirens, um, all the way up to an ambulance, a fire engine, and police. If you have a major call like that, you have four to five paramedics on scene at once. And a lot of things can get done all at the same time uh, because we all know our job, we're all highly trained, um, and things just happen. On top of that, being able to respond to the fires, you know, that same pride and, and, and skill and hard work transitions that way as well. The same same level of care that we're providing on the medical call is the same level of expertise and skill we're bringing to the fire call or the car accident or any of the rescue calls that you might see us respond to. So uh, we're a very well-versed, well-trained group of individuals and you know we love what we do and love being able to help. United States fire departments across the country were kind of an all-hazards response. So you know we get called for a lot of things, um, whether it's a cat and tree, <laughs> fire, rescue, hazmat, technical rescue, medical. I mean, we, we cover all of that throughout the year. Um, water rescue, ice rescue, it's a lot, but we get it done. Well, as the Assistant Chief of EMS and Training, I kind of oversee just that, EMS and Training. So the ambulance operations and and, and how, we, how we go out and respond to medical calls and maintain our certifications and, and everything that kind of revolves around the EMS side of things, as well as kind of overseeing the training division. I mean, it's incumbent upon us to be in excellent shape here as firefighters, right? And Burnsville affords us a great opportunity, especially with this new station and the workout facility we have here in S Station 2. We have an excellent fitness facility, and to be able to do our jobs, it's hugely important, whether it's lifting someone, cardiovascular endurance, strength, um, it's very important for our job to be able to do that. Later in the afternoon, generally someone cooks dinner. They, uh, they're on their own for breakfast and lunch, and then, uh, Someone on shift cooks dinner, and uh, you know, at five, six o'clock, they'll, they'll have dinner as a, as a crew, and then the rest of the evening is kind of theirs uh, to, uh, to do whatever they'd like, whether they, uh, a lot of them hang out, watch movies together, or uh, study if they're going to school, or whatever they might have going on. And then generally, most people are going to bed pretty early because they know they're going to be up overnight on calls. Okay. And as may pass, time 1645.
sit on the bench there on the left. Uniform, present arms. When we did a facility study of all the city facilities and identified that the old fire station one on 140th Street was at the end of its serviceable life. So that was the, the first identification and it put it in what we called phase two for replacement, which was five years out. And then in 2019, we secured an architect to help us pick a site to build fire station one on and start to uh, design that fire station. So it's it's been a long process, but we were able to, to really hone in a design that serves the community and the firefighters. Training at the old station compared to the new station is night and day. Uh, it, it was, you know, virtually, we were trying to make the best of it uh, what, with what we had there, um, but we really couldn't couldn't fit much in there. We couldn't do much training involving any crews from the outside because we really only had enough room uh, in our training room uh, for the people that we had on shift. Uh, so this new area, this new space, allows us to kind of incorporate trainings from outside. We've already had trainings for uh, the entire county here. Um, in the first in the first weeks of this being open, it's a it's a very great place for the firefighters to live. It it has a lot of health and wellness features for their physical well-being as well as their emotional well-being and a lot of cancer prevention pieces. Uh, so it's a really modern design that'll serve us well into the future. I really like the space that is separate living quarters from the downstairs. Uh, there's definitely it's good to get a disconnect of feeling like you're at work and then feeling like I'm going upstairs to have a meal and to relax a little bit because when you go on a call your nervous system might be a little bit higher so it's good to come back and try and bring it back down again in a relaxed space so if you're gonna have dinner with the crew it's a separate feeling from being at work, if you will. Yeah, it was actually a pretty long transition uh, preparing for it. This is critical infrastructure. You can't miss a call for service. So making sure that everything worked before we moved over was important. Uh, we have we did a lot of testing and, and actually pushed back the move in date a number of times to make sure things were ready. Uh, the day of, it was a, a really nice ceremony that we did. All our vehicles from the old fire station in one parade over to the new fire station came over here and had a traditional, untraditional uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. And we used a fire hose and actually uncoupled the fire hose instead of cutting the ribbon. So we got this beautiful new facility. I think I've probably done 10 tours since we moved in in January. And it's been great to have people come in and see the facility and get to know us. Um, we've done some Cub Scout tours, you know, with the way the world has been recently with some COVID restrictions, we weren't able to do as much uh, fire prevention week stuff out in the schools. But uh, I have a feeling we'll get back to that this year. Probably lastly, but most importantly, is it, it provides a, an efficient and a safe place for our firefighters to operate from so that in the event they do need to call 911 and we need to respond, you're going to have well trained, well rested, and well taken care of firefighters. And it's an efficient setup so that the firefighters can get direct access to those trucks and get going as soon as possible with the right equipment to that emergency. Order, order, order!